try to get together. We're running a few minutes late.
about Kayavia, uh, the, the barrel, uh, back row specialist, in other words, going uh, to school of uh, my name is Glenn Norman. I'm a senior, playing middle blocker, and I'll be attending the week. Um, I'm Rob Akana, um, senior, and um, I play um, outside uh, hitter, um, substitute actually, and um, I will be going on LCC. Hi everyone, my name is Ellie Tatula. I'm a senior. My name is Dr. Junior Sa. I'm a middle blocker.
Okay, moving right along. Um, item number four, board vacancy at RC. We do have one seat open, as I indicated. And uh, at this particular time, I'd like to entertain uh, nominations for the seat. Any nominations on the floor? Anybody in? Oh, so that's okay. Somebody has to make a nomination. He's not here, but if you wanted me to know, if you wasn't here, wanted me to know me, a resident of Kalah, from Kalah West. Kalah West.
board chair, Richard Graber, if I could be. Um, so I just had a question about maybe possibly a good convenience. Um, if we could get an update on the fire station. Um, you should ask. <laughs> I'll answer that question. Uh, my name is Vatayan Chief Anakani from the Honolulu Fire Department's Administrative Services. I'm here to report on a couple of um, projects that we have in the uh, Ever region. The first one of which uh, the gentleman here asked about, which is uh, Ocean Point Fire Station along Keonula, uh, Keonula Road. Uh, we are in the, uh, as you know, we're in the budget uh, preparation cycle for FY09. Uh, we currently have six and a half million dollars in the budget for the construction of a two bay, approximately 11,000 square foot station. Um, the second project I'd like to report on is a, we located a site, uh, two blocks wide eye of the north south road, uh, currently under construction. Uh, two blocks wide eye of that road along the Hopalay Parkway extension for another fire station there. We're planning a two company station on a two acre lot. Uh, so we're excited about this. This is a, it's in the early stages. Uh, we're seeking funding and planning and design for that. I'm happy to report on uh, these public safety issues to the other community. Okay, thank you. Thanks for your question. Any other questions from the rest of the community? I'm oh, sorry, Harry. Show me. Good morning, guys. When, when this um, the two fire station open, what will happen to this one? Um, will it still operate, or will you guys going to close that down? Um, the company that's currently assigned there will be relocated to the Ocean Point Station. As far as the disposition of the structure itself, that hasn't been determined yet. As the board, since you're bringing up all this good news, what can we do um, to help expedite um, these positions that you guys are taking place in um, having these uh, new facilities in our area? Um, well, right now at this point, it's early on in the, uh, in the process. Um, we've got, we have a lot of support of both the city administration as well as uh, the council as a whole, as well as council member of Oak. Um, so at this time, it's uh, we don't foresee any adversity. It's actually very receptive. Um, of course, your guys are active involvement in and uh, is always welcome. Okay, any other questions? Okay, can we just one more? Um, Kobe Mann, Evan Beach resident, for Chairman Chargrave. There was some discussion about an EMT um, funding for an EMT or something to be housed in the fire station area or located by it. Are you speaking of Ocean Point, sir? Yeah. Uh, right now, at this point, um, we have no plans for an EMS inside the design plan. But our design that we currently have under um, has that ability to have it easily incorporated. So should that time come, it's easily added on uh, to the facility. Okay, good deal, thank you. Um, anybody else in the community? All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, um, can you give us a copy of the Okay, thank you. Uh, moving forward, HBD. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Hargrave, board members, and uh, members of the audience. Um, I'll be, uh, my name is Mike Johnson. I'm a, one of the watch commanders for uh, the district for this area. And I'll be reporting on the crime stats for the month of March 2008. The board members each have a copy, and if anybody here has a copy, there's a copy over here on the table to my right. Um, during the month of March uh, 2008, uh, there were two sex assaults, one robbery. 20 burglaries, 13 vehicles broken into, six auto thefts, 37 cases of theft, 26 cases of property damage, and 57 motor vehicle collisions. Uh, throughout the district, uh, there were 366 adults. Correction. For March, there were 190 adults arrested, with 159 juveniles arrested. Um, the community police team message of the month is to um, to thank all the uh, neighborhood security watch coordinators, 
Much mahalo for your attendance and your support with the Chiefs Neighborhood Security Watch Forum last week. It was a huge success. On behalf of Major Michael Moses and Chief Boise Correa, big thank you for your continued support. We look forward to continuing our partnerships with you and all members of your respective communities. I'd also like to add that uh, beginning March 15th, we added an extra beat patrol uh, beat in the area as now BD 78, which covers the uh, Iroquois housing area. So uh, on most days, uh, staffing permitted, we have an extra uh, patrol officer in the area. Right. And you can see we've been waiting for that for a while. Okay, uh, board members, any questions? Gary? <coughs> Sir, um, I just heard on the news um, the taggers are getting bold and um, they're tagging uh, personal properties now, personal houses that they're building. Uh, are we or have we uh, seen anything happening in the community that they're building in Gentry, Haseko, or all the other places? Because this was on the freeway. I just heard it this evening before I came and they're getting bored and taking um, houses near the freeway. Uh, we, uh, I, I myself, I haven't noticed any tagging on the freeway, at least for quite a while. Um, I've seen uh, one or two incidences of, of so-called tagging in the Haseko area. Um, I haven't noticed any in the Gentry. Uh, what we try to do is maintain a visible patrol to, to deter uh, individuals from, from doing that along with other crimes, of course. And, uh, May I make a follow up on that? By all means. Um, <clears throat> I know the freeway, there's not too much tagging on the freeway, freeway but now they're going into um, trespassing private properties and tagging the homes that are being built now. And the contractor is, you know, got a, and, and the person who purchased the house is waiting for, to move in, and yet they come in and, hey, the place is tagged, you know. So I, I don't know if there's any laws on that other than, other than uh, minor. Uh, well, it would be criminal property damage uh, if, if, if you're spray painting something. Whether, whether the house is built or not, it, it, whether the new owner has, has quote, closed on the house or not, it's still at that point the property, the contractor is actually building it. So uh, it would still and it would still be a good <coughs> property damage case if that was happening. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, any other board members? Okay, I've uh, got one and then I'll turn it over to the uh, uh, community. On your report you talked about the uh, burglaries, there's uh, 20 burglaries and roughly 37 thefts. Um, and I assume all that's in 96706 area? Uh, yes, three, sir. Three, no? Yes. I hear yes and no. <laughs> that's correct. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, any specifics on, on areas? Uh, when I talk about areas, uh, uh, let's say Gentry Ocean Point or Flora uh, Ever Beach or whatever. 876 is probably uh, this area where we are right now from Hanakahi down to end of um, Fort Reed Road. Yeah, you can see that this area that we're in now, uh, 8876, it has the most burglaries, followed by 874, which is Ocean Point area, with a total of six of them. Okay. Is there anything that we can do as a community to help you? Uh, I mean, I know you talked about the uh, neighborhood security watch programs, and uh, the following question that I have was, how many uh, paper programs do we have in 96? And uh, is there anything that we can do to help you as a community? Definitely. Uh, regardless of whether you're a member of the Neighborhood Security Watch program or not, if you see anybody suspicious in your neighborhood or suspicious activity, suspicious vehicles, anything that doesn't look right, don't hesitate to call us. We'd rather get a phone call about possible suspicious activity and check it out and find out it's, it's, there's nothing bad going on than have people with, uh, not call us, and then in the meantime, something bad does happen, and we and then we're called after the fact. Whereas 
if you call us right away, we have an opportunity to get there and either uh, stop the activity that, that may be about to happen or deter it and, and uh, send them on the way, so to speak. Okay, okay, that's good. That's primarily what I was looking for, and that's for the benefit of the community because I know a lot of us get kind of uh, complacent, so uh, sometimes those reminders need to be on the forefront. And the basics, too, you know, you keep your garages closed and don't leave your doors <laughs> open on your houses. Exactly. Okay, sounds good. Uh, community, uh, any questions for um, HPD? Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Folks, have a nice time. Okay, we can see it, sorry. Sergeant Major Hamilton, I'm representing the Evo Meetings in Cypher with the Chairman Board Members Committee. I apologize, I grabbed the wrong sack of paper so I don't have my stats for this month, but um, I did peruse them before I came and there wasn't any significant um, rise in any particular crimes on the BNC site, so um, at this time I'll entertain any questions that anybody has, has about the LBNC site. Board members? Uh, anybody from the community have any questions for BNC? Good report. Yes, one thing I'd like to share is um, we had this um, cleanup of the Boys and Girls Club, which is the WNC's adopted safe haven for um, uh, juveniles. Uh, we did have a cleanup two weeks ago, I think it was, and then um, we didn't finish, so we're gonna have another cleanup day on the 19th, which is a Saturday, which is, uh, next Saturday coming up. Anybody who's interested in coming out and helping us out, please, uh, any help you can, for Andy, whatever. We're doing painting, cleaning up, and stuff like that at the Boys and Girls Club, so. Um, um, the 19th is starting at about nine o'clock, and we'll run it. To the ball All right, you buying lunch? Um, <coughs> I believe lunch is provided. Hey, all right, you might be there. <laughs> <laughs> Always go for food. Okay, okay thank anybody you. else? All right, thank you, sir. Okay, moving right along. Now, uh, water, water, water supply. Um, good evening, board members and uh, our neighbors. Uh, my name is Cal Suleyoko. And this evening, my report is very short. Um, there was no uh, water main breaks for the month of March for general water announcements. As we all know, water is our most essential resource. It is an ever-present part of our daily lives and the world we live in. As everything needs water to survive, we prepared, we prepared a handout for you tonight that explains where our water comes from, how watersheds uh, capture what rainfall to replenish our groundwater supplies, and what we can do to help protect our watershed. And I put that hand out on our community table there for those who are you know, interested. And that concludes my report this evening. Okay, board members, any questions, comments? Okay, anybody from the community got any questions for Board of Water? All right, All right thanks, Bill. Thank you, good job. Okay, military, uh, Lieutenant Commander Coleman. Okay, good evening, Mr. Chair, uh, board members. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, got it. All right, go ahead, Commander. Sorry. Okay, no problem. A little clarification on our part over here. Okay, good evening, uh, Mr. Chair, board members, and uh, residents of Ella. Um, I'm Lieutenant Commander Coleman, United States Navy. Um, I'm here, I, I have a couple follow-up follow questions to, uh, or comments on questions. Brian had one on the ESI for the dredging at the Milcon Project T181. Uh, they did do uh, environmental considerations, and um, that you can find, you can get that. Well, I say you can access that via map back Hawaii, and uh, that's what's under our Army Corps of Engineering Admit uh, under Section 10 of Rivers and Harbors and Act, which just requires that because it's maintenance dredging and construction dredging, it's not actually anything with the soil on the outside of the door. But like I said, it's available through uh, NAP Act of Y. Commander, can you give me a copy? Well, I don't, this is not a copy of that study right here. This is just a, my notes as far as the permit that was done. I give you that permit number. Not the permit number, but the permit that they <coughs> Is it going to cost me something? It's no, like I don't know if they're going to give you an actual copy of it. I'm just saying it's available through NAP Act of Y. Well, I'll about the cost. You, you, you can defray the cost and just make a good copy and give it to well, I'll give you a number of persons to contact over there. And um, 
I had another resident ask about the uh, roadway, North Road, the golf course there. We're in contact with the um, uh, Ever International, and uh, we're going to partner with them as, as whenever they can get with us on how they want to do it. But we'll partner with them to help them clean that road <coughs> right there. But, I mean, that's their road. We have no jurisdiction on that road, so we can't tell them what to do with the road. But we will assist them if they come to us for our assistance. And um, <coughs> tonight we have uh, Mr. Steve Colon, uh, Captain Hodge, he's the Chief, uh, Chief of Staff for Navy Region Hawaii, and also Mr. Lynn Tanaka to address the issues on access to Fairway uh, Point Island Drive. Yes, sir. Okay, um, Steve, Commander, whoever. And um, I'd like to say to the community, I was um, uh, invited to the uh, meeting that they had uh, offering the open access to uh, Iroquois Point, and uh, this is what they're here today. Uh, we as a community have been talking about this for a while, uh, getting access, and um, there are some open doors now starting to work in that direction. Steve. I guess I'll start. I'm, my name is Steve Cullo, and I'm with uh, Ford Island Housing. And uh, before we talk about that, I did want to say that we actually paved the, um, and patched up that, that portion of, uh, of North Road. and. Um, it really needed it. I hope we don't have to keep doing that in the future, but um, you know, I'm glad at least we took care of it. Okay, well, we, um, uh, we're here to, to tell the public uh, in person about our public access uh, policy for those who want to go enjoy the, uh, the, the beautiful beach over at, at Iroquois Point. Uh, the you, many of you probably have read about it in the, in the newspaper uh, since the you know Navy and Fort Island Housing did a, a joint press release. Uh, but we've been working pretty closely with the, the Navy over the past several months to come up with a policy uh, that that uh, balanced the national security interests that the Navy has some of their security issues along with um, uh, with, with with issues that uh, we had at Iroquois Point. But I'm pleased to say. Uh, that we now have a, a policy. We will be ready to implement it on April 15th, and uh, that policy will allow the public to come on to Iroquois Point um, on a, a daily basis. Um, we've, uh, there's a lot of specifics to the program, so I'll, I'll address any of those that, that folks want to hear, uh, but uh, to highlight some of them. Uh, folks who want to uh, come on to Iroquois Point, either uh, by a vehicle or a bicycle, uh, we'll issue them a one-day pass to go to the beach. Uh, on that pass, there will be uh, you know a map on the back of it showing you where uh, where to go at Go Park. We've got a, a we've got a, a couple of uh, parking locations that have been designated. Uh, it'll also have some you know instructions, uh, do's and don'ts. And uh, one thing that's uh, recently uh, or, or relatively recent development is uh, anybody who comes on board will actually have to sign a waiver, a liability waiver, um, actually, which is, is uh, something that the Navy um, can, can probably address more of, but it'll be a uh, release of liability for folks that are engaging in any of the water activities. Uh, once you get down to the beach, uh, we will, you know, uh, we're inviting the public to enjoy, uh, enjoy the ocean. Uh, you can swim. Uh, you can, uh, you know, boogie, uh, body, uh, body surf, boogie, boogie board, uh, and in, in general, just enjoy the area. There is a, um, in terms of how that will actually work, uh, it is going to be really important, especially as this, this program starts and public does come on board and, and, and experience the Iroquois Point, that people also understand that there is going to be an area that you're going to have to stay in, particularly if you're out there swimming around in the ocean. Uh, we are going to have those areas marked, and I'm going to go ahead and show this to members and just pass, pass the, uh, the map around so you can see how it, um, how it works. Uh, but essentially, uh, on the EVA side, or I'm sorry, on the, say on the Waianae side of Iroquois Point, uh, there is a, a marine rifle range, so obviously you can't go, you can't go past that. Uh, on the other side, the entry to Pearl Harbor, uh, you know, you've got the Pearl Harbor in it. So uh, our areas are, are going to be well marked, and we're going to be asking the public to stay within that range. Uh, let me go ahead and point that out to you.
Let me add on to that. Uh, it's important to note when uh, Steve says public, this is everybody. That includes the folks at the lower and airport point, as well as the people who are coming on with the day passes. The, that that uh, section of water that we're going to have marked off is, is the access that uh, we, the Navy, with security concerns, can, uh, can work with. And it's high, I guess it's highlighted with yellow uh, on that uh, map there. Um, just like you know, you, you see it at a at, 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 at the resort. Uh, same same situation. And then for the um, we've been talking about twenty seven passes. I, I'm not sure you're gonna have twenty seven. Seven twenty three. Twenty three. Twenty three. Going there, but how are you gonna okay, now? Because because the residents of Elmo Beach brought this up now. We get fifteen guys come from on the south side. Think of the fifteen slots. So who's gonna get priority? That's what we need to. That's what they wanted to know. Because if they're going to go over there, and then 50, 50, all of a sudden, now they know it's open for whatever reason. They come down and take up all the slots. But what if from every beach that fought from day one to use the beach, supposedly, kind of get in because there's no more passes because uh, residents from Mellows came down and took up all the spots. You know, that was one of the concerns, essentially limiting mm -hmm. parking access to the beach. You know what I'm saying? Because I could see if you guys got a, but like say right now, I want to go, my friend want to drop me off at the gate and I want to walk over. Is that going to consist of people that are walking in too? We, we do not want to have people walking in. It's, it's a mile to walk from the entry gate over to the beach. Well, we used to walk from Campbell High School, an old road that is locked down by the Marines, supposedly that's what I was told. Mm -hmm. All the way from Campbell, walk all the way through there to the beach. So it wasn't like it's, it was never heard of. It, it's heard of. I just wanted to know about that kind of because if you're going to limit the car access, like any other beach, the beach access is still open to the public. So if we want to walk from Kauku to come to this beach, I mean, we should be able to be accommodated to come to the beach without having one pass this way on the car. And it's not like we're going to go over there to break in. I mean, we're walking with, you know, our sure. surfing gear, not with our screwdriver and our hammer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> then I can understand, but if they're coming in, because get this guy, I don't know if you guys see him people in the community here. He walks on the old Farrington Highway all the way to um, Barbers Point and surf every day. Okay? You ask him for a ride, he will not ride with you, but he'll walk his surfboard to the back road all the way to Kalailoa and will surf at Wake Plains. And that's over five miles. And he walks every day, you see him with that surfboard, every day to surf, and he goes there. So that's what I'm saying. There's people that's willing to walk and take that chance to see you guys beautiful beaches and to access your beautiful beaches, I don't think they should be um, stopped at the gate and say, hey, you got no car, can I come in? I think that's something that you guys should look into. Like any other program, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll look at it. Okay, um, any other board members? Are we open up to questions, Mr. Uh, hang on one second. Uh, Bill? Uh, in that same, that same thing that my friend we were talking about, a lot of us, including myself, are retired military, and we were allowed to go down there to utilize the uh, mini mart, correct? Correct. Yeah. Now, if we want to go down there and utilize the beach, is that that's like counting against the 23 spots? Yes. That going to be filled up with her with Yes, sir. Thanks, Mr. Chair. There's there's some parking spot for the residents as well. The limiting factor for UHMS is, is 23. For what reason? We picked 23 because it, uh, it represents about 20 percent of the parking spaces that we have right now. This thing has been uh, has been going on a long time, and we're, we're glad to see that you're at this point. But my concerns are more than 23. Uh, I, I cannot imagine that uh, a public, you know, a private contractor has gone into that area 
and they kind of segregate of what they want their beaches to look like. Um, to me, I think uh, the reasons for closing it out, I think there's community pressure to keep some of the beaches closed out to public access. But my concern yet is beyond this. Uh, there's other issues involved. Uh, native rights issues. And I think we haven't addressed those native rights issues. But here we are at a, at a almost like an impasse. You're limiting things to 23 parking stalls. So, so uh, my question is, why are you limiting the beaches to just 23 parking stalls? No, I, the, we talked about this a minute ago. Uh, we, it, that represents 20% of our spaces. Uh, in addition, and, and you know, Iroquois Point still has uh, almost 250 um, homes that we're, we haven't leased up yet. Okay, so uh, as this community continues to grow, as we continue to have people moving in, we're going to have more folks living there. So more of the residents are going to be need those parking areas. So really, the 23 is a, from my standpoint, it's a number to get us going with. And and I'm just as as curious as everybody else to see how that's going to go. I mean, I don't, I can't tell you right now whether I think we're going to have. Uh, five people show up, you know, uh, or, or 20, or all 23 within the first hour. I mean, I think we just need to, we need to, to, to see how it goes. Mr. Chair, I think we, well, we have to take an inventory of what's available instead of saying just limited to 23. I have one question. Somebody else wants to answer that. Celeste, real quick, and then I'm going to make a statement. Okay. There's 23 parking. Oh, I'm sorry. Could you ask them if this 23 parking, is it going to be like a labeled parking for outsiders or, you know, or does a residence on Iroquois Point will also have access to those parkings? Okay, I think I can answer that. Uh, first of all, um, uh, no, it's not particularly labeled. It is a section that has been designated and this is based on my visit there for that invitation that I had. Um, it's a section that has been designated for um, people that have access to come into their first point. Now keep in mind, this is an opening. Like I uh, had mentioned here a few seconds ago, we've been uh, trying to get access into the area for quite some time. I think we've made some steps in that direction. I don't think that you need to beat up on the people to say about how many stalls or whatever. The idea is, the idea is that we have some open stalls. That whole system may change and open up more. But it's the it's the start, okay. you know. Okay. Also, just excuse me. Um, they are they are labeled. They just so everybody knows. Every and, and, and Richard, there's Richard's two areas, and every one is labeled, so they'll know. And no, the residents won't be using those spaces. It's going to say public public parking numbers number one. Okay, Mr. So, Chair, uh, uh, can we agree to one thing that we'll keep this dialogue dialogue open? This discussion, oh, yes, yes. the community along with the people. I, I agree, with the Navy agree. And, uh, with Steve and Navy people. Agree, Gary, sorry. Well, I, I agree with everybody what you have already said, what I will be saying. This is a start. We're gonna keep the dialogue open. And just because we have 23 stall, doesn't mean that um, people who walk in cannot use the, cannot use the beach. 23 stalls mean 23 stalls for vehicles, not for people. Board Chair Rich Hargrave, if I can be recognized, I think all were. I disagree I think what we're just looking to do is monitor. We've got to start somewhere. 23 stalls is a start. Whether we need more or less, we're going to find out, right? So that we can come back to the next meeting and figure it out. My, my issue was, I think. I feel like this issue is overshadowed the road issue, but that's just my personal opinion. At any rate, my concern is that how close the proximity of this area is to a strategic military base. Will the public who's entering this area have to show proper ID and their car is up to date? And do they have to still? Similar to 
and everything else. When they come into the front entrance here, they're going to have to show uh, some sort of government issued ID. Uh, it could be a retired military ID card, a wide driver's license, some, something along that line. Yeah, the insurance. The insurance. Okay. All right, good. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. One question. Uh, sorry, I need you to take the mic. Oh, sorry. Your name, please, sir. Steve Loring, L O R I N G. Out of those 23 spots, having not been there before, I don't know how close it is to the beach, but out of those 23 spots, are any of them going to be for handicapped people? Yes. Uh, good What's that? Um. We have handicapped spaces there, and uh, you'll be able to park in any of our handicapped spaces, and that won't count against that 23. Okay, any other questions, board members? Bill? Uh, Bill? Yeah, Bill. Yeah, soccer field, basketball court, a pavilion, and a beach usage area for the public before? If it was, it was, I, I, I was before my time. Um, I know it used to be in a, a Navy housing area. I, um, just from my familiarity with the housing area, if it, if it was, it was just for the, for the folks that actually lived in that housing area. Yeah, it was a while back, but not that far back that uh, it would be off the map. Um, that was a big soccer field because we used to go there and like I said, we could break bike, and even though that was a military league, we could enter the league and play, even though it was from Devil Beach area, we could enter the league and play there. The only reason why I asked that is because I see the basketball court is still there, and, and, and it's all bossed up and whatnot. But when I look further on, you can see the access to that beach, so I just was wondering, why would um, the developer or the people that have the compound would want to take away a, a plus? That would, be, that would have been a plus for Iroquois Point, a big plus because that was a big park, just as big as the Beach, Beach Park, the one right over on a rifle range, the same size. In fact, it was even bigger. It was at a soccer field on the left and a long driveway with about maybe 30, 40 parking, parking stalls over there. So I just wanted to know why, when, when the development came in, you guys decided to close or, or use that that, um, that peak range over there. I think it was really just because we needed a, uh, to have a lay down area for all the construction work. You know, we, we renovated. 1,500 homes almost out there, and so we have a large, you know, uh, lay down yard, vehicles, all kinds of materials. Uh, but I, I mean, the basketball court's still there. I mean, kids still use it. So. <coughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, no other questions, right? Okay, I think we're pretty well satisfied. Good start, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Okay, moving right along. I lost my paper. Very nice. Uh, I have a comment. Do uh, you have a comment for it? Yeah. Public comment? Or do you just want to go talk to him? No. Okay, good. Uh, yes, uh, Commander Coble, thank you for coming. I know you get beat up here quite a bit and everything, but I don't think the community realizes last month where you are, uh, you had an explosive safety inspection. And this is a very major thing for. The, for you, your, your troops. And what I understand is, you guys kind of like kick butt. And I just want to say, from the community and myself, thank you, your men and women who've done a dynamite job. Thank you. All right, thank you. I really appreciate that. This definitely need to be recognized. Okay, moving forward. Um, Actually, moving backwards. Item number four, board vacancy at large. Entertaining nominations, correct? Okay. Uh, okay, clarification. This is board vacancy at large. We have one seat available at this point, and uh, we need to fill the seat to uh, uh, fulfill our board. 
I nominate um, Clint Guasso. Okay, nomination for Clint. Harris second. <laughs> Sorry, I do not. Okay, I'm getting advice from my board here. No second. Okay, Clint. And any others? Somebody had nominated John Celeste. Celeste. Oh, can you think of nominating?
right, we'll do um, uh, each um, nominee separately. So, board members. discussion about that it was decided too, that each each uh, board member is going to vote for one or the other to either or simultaneously <clears throat> Okay, what we'll do is uh, we'll readdress this uh, board action item number four a little bit later in our agenda. Uh, moving forward, uh, item 6A, uh, there's been a, a correction on item 6A. Um, it reads, review and acceptance of the regular meeting minutes of February 14th. It should have said March 14th, 2000. I'm sorry, 13. 13th, I'm sorry, March 13th of 2008, not 14th, February. Right now. Okay, so, um, right in reference to the uh, minutes of their last meeting, we have some corrections. All right, corrections were submitted. Is there any other corrections from the board members? 
Gary? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, say that uh, I just want everybody to know that on uh, April 16th there will be a final vote on uh, whether or not uh, uh, what's, what's the chosen met, uh, system for uh, Honolulu. And I just wanted to announce that uh, the, uh, the uh, Transportation Committee just flip flop back the other way. They have four votes in the Transportation Committee, so it goes back to the full council. This will be the final vote. And we just want to say because you folks endorsed the affiliate system, that it is very much alive, that uh, I think that the uh, majority of the council may be shifting to opening up to all parties. In other words, all parties will be issued uh, RFPs and whoever uh, Get uh, put forward the best deal will be chosen by the council, and that's what we're still working for. There's things happening behind the scenes and out in the streets that uh, uh, they don't tell you about in the newspaper or on the uh, mayor's uh, radio station. So anyway, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Any additional announcements? Please. Um, just to respond to uh, the comment that was made regarding the Phileas project. At the uh, Transportation Committee meeting, um, it was decided as a result of the vendors making presentations on each of their proposed technology before being um, steel on steel, rubber tie on concrete, monorail, and maglev. Um, 
and the vendor made a presentation, Philly specifically, um, in, the, in a committee report by the Transportation Committee, it was determined that Philly didn't meet the qualifications and didn't, but, so therefore not an option presently before the council to be considered. Thank you. Wait, you have an announcement? Oh, Mr. Chair, uh, just to follow up with affiliates. Uh, we're only doing announcements with. Oh, it's an announcement. Okay. <laughs> Anything is an announcement if you uh, if you make. Just doing a party or something. No, no, no. Um, I, I was just uh, uh, wondering uh, because they had that uh, um, testimony, the hearing on the on the uh, you know the choices, the steel wheel, whatever, the magnet on 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 road or whatever. But my emphasis was, did anybody of one of you go down there and, and testify in person? Or did you ever send testimony or a letter supporting the affiliates like we, that you guys voted on? That's my announcement. Did you get an answer? Okay, uh, yes, you can get an answer. There was a letter that was forwarded from this board in support of alternative uh, measures as we voted from the meeting at the end of the Was there mention of the affiliates in there? I can clarify. Yeah, please. Uh, at the board? At the board's uh, January 10th, uh, I took a position to favor that the environmental impact statement be inclusive of the rubber tire on concrete technology. That was a seven to nothing vote on January 10th. Was to be in favor, in favor of it being included in the EIS. Uh, I just like to clarify because somebody came up to clarify. Um, <clears throat> so are you clarifying the clarification? Yes, I am. Uh, the thing is that okay. uh, the affiliates representative was there and questioned. And the thing is that there were some statements made by the chair that uh, uh, he, he had called the FTA and asked some questions and whatnot. And the thing is, if you find out uh, after the questioning back and forth between the affiliates rep and whatnot, that the FTA was asked the wrong question to start with. And so uh, he clarified that. And so it was, in other words, Phileas has not been disqualified. And uh, I think uh, we're still in the running. We're going to give it a try because we see it is. It costs less than half. It's better. It has more adaptability and whatnot. And thank you very much for also endorsing it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Oh, um, thank you. Thank you. Um, very quickly, um, we have. Uh, at the next meeting, if it's at all possible, I'd like to be put on the agenda. Then uh, we'll have the actual FDA determination as to um, what it has to say about the Philia system. Um, and I'd like to make that request at this time. If it can be put on the agenda. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, we'll add that on. Just, just to, uh, we'll so you can all. Um, yeah. Um, can you also give us a courtesy um, uh, email? Yes, I'd be happy to do that. Thank you very much. Chair, if, if I can make a quick announcement. Very, very quickly, uh, the announcement is that because so far preliminary renderings have the rail elevated fixed guideway, it's called rail for now, uh, falling short of UH West Oahu, conceptualizations falling short of UH Manoa, going at grade rather than going over the highway, the rubber tire on concrete would service both universities because if it were to be a technology that can leave the guideway, instead of having people walk a quarter of a mile to UH West Wahoo, rubber tire on concrete would let the vehicle leave the fixed guideway and go to the front door. That's the announcement. All right, thank you very much. Anybody want to clarify that clarification? Okay. <coughs> Coach, what you got? Yeah, just, um, Thanks for bringing out all these announcements. Oh, sorry, so, um, I'm sorry, we, we gotta do this name thing for the- uh, Chris Burke, um, live here in Evan Beach, he's a big coach, but uh, 
trying to get behind the scenes now. Um, thanks for all you, as long as we keep on, I know everyone got, wants to get home early and, and as soon as we can, so as long as we can stay on our, uh, our calendar as announcements and uh, clarifications of what somebody said at another meeting, and we put all our paperwork in at the time we're supposed to, maybe we can get some announcements, like the Boys Club this weekend is gonna have a carnival to help our halal go to Las Vegas, I guess. So I, I know this is gonna show three o'clock on Saturday. So anybody who can get the word out and kind of support the Boys Club, because all these people at the Boys Club, they're pretty much volunteers. And anything you can help them out with, they're gonna have movie chicken, they're gonna have all kinds of fun stuff. So if you can shoot your kids over and send somebody over. Also the following on the 19th on the Boys Club, they're going to have a uh, beach day. Basically it's a first come, first serve. They're gonna have volleyball, um, uh, paddling and surfing and they're going to Kailua Beach they're going to take them there on the bus it's all free um, I don't know how many people that kids that they're going to take but everyone's going to get a free uh, one of those shirts for the beach I forget what they call them but uh, everyone gets out to free lunch it's it's done for the weed and seed thanks to our senator that's I guess not here and all, everybody else has been working on weed and seed so it's not filled up yet so if you know any children that want to go to the beach I believe it's at seven bring the kids there at seven o'clock I'm, uh, and uh, they're going to have a fun day at the beach. UH Volleyball is, is uh, volunteering their time. And um, Outrigger Canoe Club is going to bring the canoes. And I think it's Hawaiian Creations is going to bring the surfboards and the kids. And, you know, bring the uh, shirts and stuff. So, you know, we can just think about the kids and, and think about the announcements and the schedule so all our board members cannot resign and get home at a, a decent hour. All right, all right. Thank you. Very good. Okay. Hi, good evening, Mr. Chair and the uh, board member and the uh, community. I just made an uh, announcement for uh, we having a senior recognition program. I mean, senior recognition from the mayor's office uh, tomorrow at the Hawaii Convention Center. Uh, it will start, I think, a little bit from 9 to 12. And also, we'll be having uh, this Saturday uh, the second annual uh, health and safety fair at the uh, Waipahu Town Center. Uh, also, it's from 9 to 12. All right, 9 to 12 on both of those. Yes, sir. All right, thank you very much. Any other announcements? Okay, Deb. Um, Debbie Looney, uh, I just wanted to, <coughs> just a quick announcement, a uh, reminder that on Saturday, May 10th, we'll be Pine Foot Eva. And we had originally um, thought that it was going to be at the Majiko Park, but it will be held at Area 29 Park, Kiangui Park, next to the Everbike and Key Community Association. Um, okay, good deal. Thank you. Any other questions? <coughs> All right, thank you very much. Moving right along. Uh, okay, now this is where those other side announcements should have been. Public generated issues and concerns for the community, other than what we've already heard. <laughs> Follow up on the whole Pili draft letter. Have you heard anything? Um, no. The whole Pili. The whole draft letter. That's yeah, the whole Pili draft. I mean, yeah. yeah. I understand that there was a letter that was sent out. Yeah, so to answer your question, I did not see any response come back as of yet. We will need to do a follow up on that. So, how, can, how fast can we move? Um, because they move pretty fast. So we need to go faster. So we just got to up. The, uh, thank you, Chair. The draft environmental impact statement was due uh, a comment of April 8th, I believe, of this year, April 8th. So we're past April 8th. The comments that were submitted by the deadline to the State Land Use Commission and the applicant, the DR Fort Schuler Division, um, that comment period, which closed on April 8th, the draft environmental impact statement will be inclusive of and illustrate those comments. So if you submitted something in writing, it will be forwarded in the draft environmental impact statement. That is the response. There is no response from the entities to this board or testifiers. It's rather placed into a document. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other uh, community concerns that we need to address? Yes. Oh, sorry, Mitchell, go ahead. Sorry. Mitchell. No. <laughs> okay, um, if we have time, we want to talk about the relocation of the bus stop. Uh, 
Uh, that's going to be on, it's on the agenda. Okay. Okay. Yeah. On this on uh, the email you faster uh, for okay. um, so can you address it for next month's meeting or on the uh, development that's coming up that um, couple yeah, of you, uh, Yeah, I think uh, you go ahead and bring it up as a uh, concern and uh, what anything you might hear happen based on the agenda. For next for a development coming up at uh, East Upple Lane 2, I guess. It's, uh, this guy's name is Gerald Park. He's a planning consultant with the Mutual Housing Association of Hawaii. It's a development of a uh, 280 unit multifamily residential. I guess rental, uh, approximately 17.8 acres out in Kapule. Um, he's asking to bring a, a presentation to the neighborhood board for next month's meeting. So I'm going to put it on the agenda. Okay, and uh, I think that's something that uh, you and I discussed earlier, and I think we can go ahead and put that on the agenda. Uh, and send me a, a reminder email on that so we make sure we get it on. Mr. Chair, can okay. we uh, can we defer it to a committee instead of bringing it up before the board? Uh, um, the, no. uh, I'm asking for council to make a presentation to the to the committee. No, presentation to well, the committee. Well, I mean, let's take it to the committee because if it brings it here, it's almost like a done deal. So already we hash it out in a committee, okay. so people can go and comment. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's a very good point. And in fact, you know what, as a, as a standard for some of these issues that do come up, we might want to uh, look at that. What's the board feeling on that? You know, and in fact, directing it to the committee before we bring it to... I, I would think that let them make the presentation because maybe we're not even impacted uh, because this is a couple of days. So maybe uh, we let them make the presentation, then we can turn them on to the board. What? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's what he said. What, what, what was that again, Gary? He said exactly what you said. <laughs> no, you said that you make a you go to the community before he make a presentation. I said let him make the presentation, then we don't want to say go to the community. Then we send him to the community. No, it says backwards. It says it out in the community. Then he can make a presentation before everybody. It says backwards what you said. That's just what I said. That's that right. will come over here and okay. then make the coming send to the committee. All right, very good. Chair, I didn't have a committee. We'll, we'll, we'll make that decision. Chair, I didn't have a committee. Go ahead. Uh, very briefly, um, in the uh, committee meeting at 6 p.m. tonight under legislative committee, uh, we had discussed the notice that the proposed rail alignment would not uh, service the way West Oahu would rather fall short. And it was uh, discussed at the committee level that we placed on the agenda tonight that the uh, board could entertain uh, at least taking a reactionary position that the uh, that we could entertain this. So, Chair, I, I bring it to your attention whether this should be under public uh, concerns or if we make it into committee reports, if you'd like to address it at that time. Uh, I've already identified the fact that uh, we was going to move your uh, committee item up uh, to this particular point. And with that, I think... Excuse me, I think I said it was uh, going to be under nine. Uh, item number nine, unfinished business. Uh, I think I made mention to that earlier. Yeah. Right? Is that correct? 9B. Yes. yes, it would be 9B. And uh, placing your committee report forward. Okay. I it. Okay. Uh, moving right along, let's right in, go right into unfinished business. One and more concern. Okay, sorry. Yes, go ahead. go ahead. Okay, yeah, I forgot to mention. One more community con concern that I've been having a lot of problems with is the McDonald's drive through Every time I go through there, if we can address that in some way, shape, or form, put it on the agenda. It's, uh, we've driven through there on our bicycles and almost gotten hit. There's not enough room to go through there and it jams up the lights through there. Also, especially since they're going to be having a car wash next Saturday, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, simply fit one of our volleyball teams across at Calvary Chapel. 
It's only five dollars. We forgot to mention it earlier. Um, there's going to be a lot of traffic inside. You know, it's another thing out of uh, context. But uh, if, if there's a lot of kids in that intersection, and it needs the traffic needs to flow correctly with the uh, lights, and um, hopefully everybody will come to the car wash next Saturday. Okay, uh, reference to your the reference to your comment the about McDonald's the drive through. Yeah, yeah, the reference to your comment about the McDonald's drive through affecting the traffic on Port Reef Road. I just want to make sure I'm in the Correct. Right. Yes. Okay. Which is uh, across can you the street. something in writing so we can address that? Okay. okay. Directly across the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over here. I've got it. Okay. Just fill that out. Get it back to uh, Noel over here, and then we'll uh, address that to the city and see if we can get an answer for you. Yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. Okay, I understand. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just want to, one more concern. Uh, the last two months, we've been asking for an update on the on the Fort Lauderdale widening, and we didn't get a response as to you know ever been placed. Uh, it was agreed by the members of the of the board that we would have an update from the DOT and the and the, the contractor. And it's been about three months, we, we didn't get a reply. But since Scotty's here, he represents the DOT. You need to be over here. <laughs> no, Scotty, I'm talking about. Not, no, I, I'm just, I, I'm just, I just want to, you know, have Scotty acknowledge that he's going to bring his people down next month. Okay, all right. We'll, we'll talk to Scotty about that. Uh, we're going to go into our unfinished business first. And uh, we'll address that as, as a few minutes to plug in there. We'll do that. Okay, moving on to unfinished business, item 9A, relocation of the bus shelter. Uh, we're hoping to get a, a good update on that. There are some major concerns for our community residents, uh, especially um, crossing Fort Weaver Road, trying to make uh, access to the buses. So, uh, let's see who we got here to make that. Uh, okay, we got three mics. We got three mics over here. Everybody can stand at the same time. Actually, if you go over there, the camera can pick it up. And it makes it a little bit easier for explanation. Um, my name is Greg Burgess. I'm a, I've been signing as a concerned resident of, of uh, the Gentry Project for the Coldwalker and Fort River um, bus. And it has gone over several, uh, about three months now. And initially what I did is I addressed that in the Gentry project, there are only two covered, benched, well-prepared bus stops. Both of them are on the intersection of Polawaka and uh, Fort River Road. One service is in and one service is out of the Eva area. Um, it's also a focal point for a lot of the the uh, west side of Fort River Road, where they, that's a major intersection for the bus within the Devil Bay Gentry complex, as well as the carriages and the other areas to the eastern side of uh, Fort River Road. Uh, the proposal was initially to temporarily move the bus stop heading north on Fort River Road from the southern side to the northern side for temporary time only and then move it back just for the construction. However, uh, after our meeting uh, with the Department of Transportation in February, you know, February 10th, uh, it was addressed as we were giving a timeline and everything else. But what had happened was there's already been work, I think went to the uh, work on Kowalka wasn't supposed to start until May. There's already been work ongoing already in the placement of the underground sensors, um, and it's been done like from 8:30 to 2 o'clock when the working guys are not home. Okay, so we don't really sense that. It's been so you know there's been there's work being done ahead of time that's costing uh, money. Okay. And it's actually leveraging against us when we say that 
the bus stop should ultimately end up in the same location that it is because of safety and several other issues. Uh, the biggest part as a homeowner in Gentry and the Gentry Association is that if they move the bus stop to the northern side of that intersection and it's normally the city will designate or the state will designate where it's going to be and the landowner moves in and develops the bus stop. It now puts the association, the people that live in this community at risk not only for being hit by a car but also being having to pay should somebody come out of Kolowaka, make a left turn onto Fort River and hit the bus or a bus stop. And it's it's been seen in other areas in our on this island where that's happened. And how often we've seen and now we've got a thoroughfare coming through where it should be what, 35, 45 miles an hour. And I could probably get a paycheck that probably the slower cars would be going about that speed, but the rest of the cars would be speeding. However, what I've done is uh, I wrote a letter, initial letter with a petition that was circulated through this board. And the board turned around and endorsed forward to the Department of Transportation. <coughs> concurring with not moving the bus stop, the bus stop. Okay, for a number of safety reasons then. Since then, uh, Ms. York has provided other correspondence, national correspondence, on uh, setting up bus and recommendations. And all of this was forwarded to the uh, Department of Transportation for consideration and where we, uh, where we stood on, where the board stood on it. And at that time, uh, there was no action done. And then I, I had a, a friend that didn't get on a bus because during the day they were, had relocated the, the bus stop to the, the north side of the intersection. And I don't care how good it is, our bus system is, the bus system won't, the, the handicap thing won't drop all into the ground and make it safe for somebody to get there. So that was brought to my attention. Then I found out that they were doing the construction prior to the May start date. Uh, some construction that I did. And I addressed that in a correspondence. Uh, at that time, I addressed the correspondence not only to the board, uh, to Rich as a, uh, as a chair to disseminate, but also through the legislative transportation committees. Um, and our uh, city council, Greasy of State City. City drives the buses, state recommendation. What I did was um, also uh, address a series of safety issues. Okay, and Paramount was, you've got people crossing, how many lanes of traffic is no longer you know, it's being increased, what, 11 one way, and you got, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, going back the other way, okay? And then you've got people that have got to walk now across two sets of streets, three sets of streets, depending on just to get to the bus, okay? And we all know what human nature is. It's doing what we're not supposed to do. And they're addressing all, well, it's, it's what happens. Why Paulo has built, a chain link fence to keep people from jaywalking. And there's some areas where the fence is cut already, and they're still jaywalking. Um, so there's a lot of safety concerns that, that come into play. Um, with the existing bus stop, where it is, if those of you haven't really looked at it with an engineer's mind, it's built back. It's protected, it's got power tile all the way around it, so, and it's at a point where no speeding vehicle should even target it, okay? Whereas what's proposed, making a left turn on Kolowaka, if you look where it says it's a little too fun a little, that little notch there, or what they call a bus bay, uh, 
And if you take the lane on Paul Walker making the left turn, no, uh, uh, the other way, from lower side, up, making the left turn on Paul Walker, onto Fort River Parade, going up, making that left, what does that target do? If anybody loses control, what's to stop a vehicle from running into the bus stop? Uh, you know, there are no barriers or anything. And there's not enough space for them to put that niche in the road, okay, and still have the enough embankment or sound barrier uh, for the homes that are around that area. And also, so I said, you track with a uh, bicycle route goes, I want you to notice this, okay? Okay, it goes right there, right alongside the bus where the bus is going to be parking. Okay, so you no longer, longer have cars running alongside the bus. You have, but then you have uh, joggers and bikes to the left side. So now which is a safer method as it is now? The joggers and bicycling is to the right side? Or you want to have it on the left? Uh, I could go and read some of the excerpts that I did here, but basically what happened is what was cited to me, and I'd like to thank Representative Pine for addressing it to the Transportation Director. Um, their reference too many pieces of paper. I've, I've been uh, by the way, the director and I now address on first name basis. So we've been sending a little bit of email. And I'll read from this email. I will also note, for those interested in reading the report, that the, almost every single example, whether it be illustration or a photograph of a real bus live bus stop in TCRP, which is Correspondence 19 report, the far side stops as that is a but anyway, um, sometimes it takes me two to three light cycles to get across Fort Weaver Road on Kowalwaka because of traffic. That's the kind of traffic that's there. Okay, good, thank you. Light 15. Light 15. Light 15. Okay, everybody be there. I will be late for work. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, everybody. My name is uh, Scott Shikoff from the State Department of Transportation. No, bringing up a lot of good points. And we, they asked me to come out and explain why we felt the far side uh, bus stop, why, why it should be on the far side of the intersection. So I, I want to give our reason why. Um, I kind of give a handout, and I thank, thank you guys for putting this out, because I guess everybody can see it, particularly for Orello. If you look at the, if you look at the map, that I handed out the first hand out. And then you know. And yes, I can color between the lines. Um, <laughs> the yellow part is the right, the designated right lane for, for this project, widening project, and the two purple areas of the traffic island, and I'll talk about that a little later. So the, I guess the question is why are we deciding to relocate the bus stop, I guess, on the far side or the Mampa side of the intersection? Traffic engineers felt, I guess, trying to avoid conflicts between the drivers and pedestrians. Um, there's a lot of, I guess, variables, like you know, Greg was mentioning. Um, we felt that by it's, it's a similar relocation of the bus stop at Lala Nui for the first phase of Fort Weaver Road. And a lot of traffic experts, national traffic experts, do say that it does create more adequate sight distance for drivers of pedestrians and other traffic around them. I know there seems to be some disagreement with that, but let me explain. Got, you have the, right now, the bus stop. The bus stop right now, obviously, is on the high side. I guess this will be a designated right lane turning here. Um, one, of the, one of the concerns brought up is, uh, with accidents with buses, is when you have a parked bus, regardless of where it is, it does tend to conflict uh, block the site of people crossing. That's the reason why we didn't want the bus stop on this side, even if it would be a bus day. 
We thought it would be easier if it's on this side. Uh, another concern we have too is when, and we see this a lot, when there's a park bus, people tend to cut in front of it. And like I said, it does block the line of sight of anybody or traffic in front of the park bus. That was our concern. The other thing we wanted to talk about is, um, the other concern is about the drivers, like I said, who cut in front of the park bus, is just, that's, that's obviously a big concern. But the, the other concern we had too was, um, sorry, it's a long day. But we felt by moving the bus stop here, and I know Greg sent us an email about, with some documents, a report, talking about bus stop safety. I kind of went through, and he just mentioned, he just read it too. I just want to read it again, where while everybody can see it, page two of the handout. Uh, this was in, like Greg mentioned, of uh, chapter 3, page 50. The recently completed study of pedestrian accidents found that approximately 2% of pedestrian accidents in urban areas and 3% in rural areas are related to bus stops. Okay, quote, these accidents generally involve pedestrians who step into the street in front of a stop bus or are struck by vehicles moving in adjacent lanes. I think that one is key. Uh, the situation develops when the line of sight between the pedestrian and an oncoming vehicle is blocked or when the pedestrian simply does not look for an oncoming vehicle. This type of accident can be reduced by relocating the bus stop from the near side of an intersection to the far side. This is the report that was given to us in the email. Um, I guess this is being distributed to the neighborhood uh, about why we should keep it on the, on the near side. But it says here that this type of accident can be reduced by relocating the bus stop from the near side of an intersection to the far side thus encouraging pedestrians to cross the street from behind the bus instead of in front of them. This makes pedestrians more visible to motors approaching from behind the bus. Not only can far side bus stops reduce the potential for bus stop accidents involving pedestrians, they are less likely to obscure traffic signals, signs, and pedestrian movements at intersections, as opposed to near side bus stops. Also, conflicts between buses and right training vehicles can be reduced by using far side bus stops. Perfect. Right turn lane. But this is this is the reason why the engineers felt by moving it to the far <coughs> side would be safer. Um, we've done something similar in Lala Lane. Now I know the big concern obviously is human behavior. Um, big concern is everybody wants to take the short way from point A to point B. And it and it was a good point brought up at that February meeting. People are going to jaywalk across here. So I did talk to the engineers this past week. I asked them to go out there. Is there an adequate space to put a chain link fence? This was brought up at the February meeting by one of the Emma, by Gentry Community Association members or staff. Put a chain link fence here. And this would prevent that type of behavior from occurring. He brings up good points about left turn. I, I will take that back to consideration to the department. That is, that is a valid point. Uh, the, also in the email, if you don't mind. I don't have a copy of them. I don't know if you passed that copy about the email that was going back and forth between him and the director. It's easier to read, sir. Yeah. You want to pass it off? No, this is, no. This is easier for you to read. Okay. okay. I, would, uh, I, I got it here. Uh, Scott, uh, Real quick. So what, uh, what it seems like is that uh, you're trying to justify the uh, reasoning for the uh, proposed uh, change. And try to alleviate the concerns of people yeah. I guess the big concern with people are going to just jaywalk anyway. Yeah, and I think they will, because that's a uh, human... Uh, which, which, which is why when I, I checked with our engineers, I said, what is the possibility or the space to put in a chain link fence to prevent that? Similar to Child and Family Service, which was requested by, I believe, this board as well. Okay, the best people can jaywalk in front. Right, let me, let me uh, actually just ask this one question, and then uh, Scott also has a question for you. I don't want to uh, carry this on too much further. But uh, and I think everybody kind of gets the point. That's why I let it go this long. By the way, we've been on board here for just about 23 minutes, okay? So um, uh, the question that I have in reference to the proposal that you guys are putting in place in order to move the bus stop from reason number four is the uh, right turn lane uh, to go into uh, Polawaka. Uh, my question would be, where are the vehicles going? Everybody on that road, Fort Weaver Road, is going out of Pebble Beach and not into 
Kolowaka towards that area. So therefore, in this particular situation, um, it obviously doesn't meet the standard configuration of the proposal. Scott. Uh, let me say, Scott, I think what the, what the really right looking at is the right turn coming off of Kolowaka. And like I said, that's why I made the comment. Okay, All right. got it. Sorry. Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm wondering if uh, the Department of Transportation entertained landscaping in addition to the fence. I mean, as we try to improve the way the community looks, the idea of changing the fence right there seems uh, pretty Page Page three of the handout. I know it's kind of had a few questions about the book. This is the Farrington Highway we're talking um, We had problems with, it's a long stretch, obviously, it's like three and a half miles to we're talking. We had problems with people jaywalking, same problem in Kamehameha Highway near Pearl Ridge. Um, I don't know if you can look closely, you see the hedge? I see that, but I guess, do and we no, have No, no, there is a chain link fence. I, I see yeah. the chain link fence. Um, do we have that much landscaping in this median on Fort Weaver Road? I don't believe that there's that many feet there, are there? I don't think so, maybe okay. for this portion. No. I, I, I don't see how you're going to either irrigate the plant landscaping there, so I would, for that reason alone, highly discourage it. Secondly, with respect to these statistics, um, I'm reading approximately 2%. What was the margin of error, and would that would the margin of error make this, these statistics basically negligible? And thirdly, is it off the table for the bus stop not to be doing? Are we wasting our time, or is it off the table? We've got good statistics. Each of the pictures seems misleading, this seems misleading. Is, is this issue off the table, or can the community still affect this process? Good question again. Another question again? Good. Oh, let's see. Can the community still affect this process, or is it a done deal that we're here to justify the decision with these statistics and pictures? The department is taking the position right now that the bus stop will remain on the market side. Can I, can I read? Oh, I'll say my question before I read that. Yeah. Quick comment. Is it Ashton? Ashton? Ashton, this is the federal guidelines that recommend safety standards. Correct. In the identification process, the state can be identified. If they put in a bus stop that didn't belong and somebody got injured, they'd be liable, right? So in the instance of either or, is the state identifying either or? So in other words, if it were to remain Mackay, there's no liability issue, right? True. I'm going to disagree with that. So, so show the liability issue. Yeah, I think there's a liability issue based on the Makai side. That to me would be a determining factor if the Ashto had a recommendation that it should be on the Maukai side. That's based on the guidelines, yeah. If, if, the, if the guideline does set that, then if we went to the Makai side, the state could be liable, right? Thank you. Given that the expense for this liability will be paid by us, the taxpayers, should the community decide that it would like for the bus stop to be on the other side, <coughs> if a cost-benefit analysis were done on this determining factor, namely liability, and the community said, gee, for the extra few dollars, we're happy to have some of our own funds go towards that and could we affect the process. We are we are the bosses here and the DOT does work for the community. So often we seem to forget that and I'm so so discouraged. Okay. I'll let you continue, uh, give you another three or four minutes and then we're out of here. I'll do it more than three or four minutes. Thank you. I'll, I will make one one announcement after this if you don't mind. Uh, something totally under me. Um, Great, the email that was going, you, you mentioned other factors as well, right? If I can just mention some of them real quick. Bus stop must be located so that passengers may or with reasonable safety. Obviously, like I said, there will be a bus day. Uh, the stop, talking about lighting is important for safety. Sorry, I only have one copy, but there's, but there's gonna be about eight stop lights eight street lights on that whole bus stop area. I think that was a concern about lights at night. 
So I just I did check with Andy there on that. And one more factor, I don't know if everybody has it, the email. The bus stop should be located either before the turn lane for through routes or at the far side of the intersection in areas that have a dedicated right turn lane. And, uh, okay, uh, question in the back. Um, And uh, please try to make it quick. Uh, we do want to move on, but this is an important issue, and I'm sure everybody is concerned. Okay, it's good. Um, this is something facts straight up. Okay, you guys never learn about Anton Road and Fort Lee Why are you guys putting up some more in there? Because you guys are gonna create another rental pool in Fort River. Mm -hmm. More pedestrian accident plus more traffic. You guys cannot even figure out the traffic lights and. Renton Road and Fort River, you guys are in this. Uh, Scott. How's it? You know, you know um, have you taken a community's recommendation and submitted those recommendations? Or you just guys are just, it's a done deal, we're just going to go ahead and do it. Based upon, based upon you guys, engineers. I mean, go back to the people that are responsible for, for implementing this plan. Have you guys gone, done that? can take the consideration of the board and back to the department. Okay, uh, let me uh, uh, let's make a, a quick comment here. We're getting ready to close this out. I'm gonna let uh, Celeste do one minute break. Five more minutes, okay. Uh, Celeste, you got one minute. Um, then we're gonna close this whole action out. I do appreciate you coming to the time. Thanks. Honestly speaking, do we have time to reject that? What I understand, Paul Walker, that part of the widening will not start to be any good. So we have time to redraft that. Yeah. Thank you. All right, thank you. Can I make one more announcement? All right, go ahead. Real quick? Yes. Not related to this. Um, I'm going to be stepping down as spokesperson. No. Oh. 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 It's not related to tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you want us to talk to your boss. <laughs> <laughs> um, guys, I've been. For five years, I've been on call 24-7. Um, my family has sacrificed a lot. Um, and I guess, you know, what, you know, when Rod and I started out, Rod and Rod and I started out sitting in a McDonald's talking about how we're going to try to jumpstart this department. Um, you know, we did have a list of goals. Um, one of them was finishing up what we were widening. I know we have a discrepancy or a dispute over this, but um, even after he left, um, I, I decided to stay a little bit longer. I just wanted to make sure this project got underway, as long as North South Road. And I know there's disputes over, you know, the route of North South Road too. But um, yeah, now that it's done, um, I'm going to move on. Yeah, I got to take care of my family too, and I do. I do appreciate as a board, the other community. I'm just glad a lot of projects that I covered as a reporter, um, they're, they're underway. And I know there's arguments of how it should be done, but I'm glad it's underway and I thank you guys. That's all.
Well, sure. You know, uh, maybe next month. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a quick update. And then, oh, yeah. <laughs> this is the one I well, I found a screen I wouldn't cry, but I guess I lost that battery. So. I don't know. Um, <laughs> well, quick point, we have a road widening. Uh, again, we're, we're going to go, we're trying to hit certain intersections and get them open. Old Fort River Road by fall. Uh, Renton Road, which obviously is, once you get past that, the floodgates open up. Uh, Renton Road by spring, and then we're going to finish the Geiger by, uh, by hopefully by summer. And that's easy because it's a pretty wide area, so it's, that should be pretty cool. Okay. Real quick, quick caveat, the, the $60 million widening for Fort Weaver, 80% paid by the feds. Good point, we have an audience member that would always like to have North-South Road reconfigured. If we didn't use federal monies, we could put North-South Road where we want. If we didn't use federal monies, we could put that bus stop where we want. It's the AASHTO requirements of guidelines of federal requisites that make it be this way. So that's a good point. We can have the bus stop where we want, folks. But if you use federal monies, can't have it. One more thing, like I mentioned about the lights, there will be, I think because of the federal standards, there will be much more light, not only in the middle, but on the side as well. I think that's awesome. All right, we're on a free frame, right? Okay. All right, thank you. government job very seriously. Um, you know, taxpayers pay my salary, and um, that's the reason I was out there in the rain catching pneumonia or whatever else, but you know, I, I put my heart and soul into this, and I, I do appreciate all the compliments. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving right along. Item number 10, new business. Um, Oh, my apologies. I made a shift here and I changed papers. Okay. Tom. 
We're under committee reports, legislative capital improvements program on the agenda. And uh, in the committee at six o'clock, we had discussed two items. Uh, one was Bill 80 uh, from 2006, floor draft two, uh, which on April 3rd became a conference draft two, and that was to pick the technology for the fixed guideway. And on April 16th, our city council is gonna make that determination of uh, giving a directive for the environmental impact statement and what that technology choice uh, they want to advance. So it was uh, discussed at 6 p.m. at our committee uh, interval that this board entertain, if we can put so on the agenda with uh, a majority, uh, to have this board provide testimony to the full council at its April 16th meeting on Bill 8. And so that is one of two steps. The second step uh, was to be requesting that this board react to the uh, preliminary statement that the rail fixed guideway route, it's called rail, will fall short of UH West Oahu some thousand feet. And that's the second item to uh, make comment. And with that, uh, Chair, I'd like to bring it to your attention if you could entertain um, having the board place it on the agenda item so we can take action. Okay, board members, any objections? No. Okay, so move. There's no on the agenda. Uh, okay, so at this stage then, we're gonna move on to the first item, which would be Bill 80, and that's for the April 16th to provide uh, testimony in writing to the uh, full council, whereby uh, Chair Marshall would be notified of the sediments of this board on what type of technology they would like to have implemented into the environmental impact statement. And I would like to make a motion that this board continue on with its January 10th observations and comment that this board advance for the April 16th position to the council that it include in the EIS rubber tire on concrete technology. Given that this board has made this statement to the city council already, and given that both the council and the transportation committee seem to be making the decisions on steel wheel, steel wheel on steel rail based on the proprietary natures of the technology and the openness of competing bids, I would far rather see this board take a position that encourages the council not to restrict itself to proprietary technologies or not to let that be a limiting factor. This could be a path for innovation. I realize the what direction that uh, they're, what we're attempting to go, but I think we've made that statement and I think that where the battle's about to be lost is were there to be a serious consideration for a non-steel rail technology, the argument was based on job creation around helping to build an industry to create these quote unquote proprietary technologies. <coughs> Short of that, we're just gonna say the same thing we've said already, and we're not gonna introduce any new ammunition for the esteemed council members to say, gee, wait a minute, we haven't thought of that yet. So the battle's been lost over whether or not it's proprietary, and 99% of the eyes glaze over there, and then you know the other bit of the battle's been lost over whether or not this that's my only comment. I mean, we said we want to say to the council, and we can repeat it, but I don't know that you know, we can give them something act on unless we change what we're suggesting. Okay, board members, we have a motion on the floor. And we're in discussion from the uh, comment from uh, Scott. Any other additional discussion? If, if I can, Chair, I want to elaborate very briefly on, on the justification for the rubber tire on concrete very briefly is, is again, that it would serve Ever Beach. You imagine uh, service at your front door and taking you on, uh, not through 19 stops, but hitting your destination in 45 minutes as opposed to 75 minutes. There are a lot of advantages. Um, we've discussed this before, but point being that if Ever Beach wanted to position itself to advocate for itself, that the tax expenditure serve Eva Beach, one has an opportunity at this time to forward that. Yes, I am. <laughs> Oops, um. Um. 
As I understand it, rubber tire on concrete is not, is, is considered public transportation, right? The way the GET law was written, the funds that are currently being collected from all of us cannot be used for public transportation, correct? Uh, no, R to be used for a ma uh, mass transit initiative, R. Mass transit, but cannot be used for public transportation that is currently in existence, which is rubber, rubber on concrete, correct? It's how one defines rubber tire on concrete. If you're calling it a bus, an expansion of the bus at 247 would prohibit that expenditures of the surcharge, correct? Rubber tire on concrete, though, could be that of which uses a fixed guideway and surface streets, just as a bus simply could. But by calling it rubber tire on concrete, it's looking at uh, technologies outside of just the bus. It's, it's a very uh, uh, <coughs> You know, we have a councilman of Poe here who's, who's examined this to, to great length, but the, the point being is Ebba Beach could do nothing. We could, they could follow the recommendation of the full council and say we'll do steel on steel. The end result, the end result is that the Ebba Beach community will have to trek up uh, to gain access to this uh, fixed guideway as opposed to being serviced by the fixed guideway. I guess the point is that, I guess the point is it's not going to get my point is, it's, it's, this is not going to to serve any purpose. No. I, I, yeah, we, I, have, I have something. <clears throat> if it looks like a dot, walks like a dot, it's a dot. So I don't know why we call it a concrete or tire. It rolls like a bus, looks like a bus, sounds like a bus, it's a bus. So part of my idea is that we're looking for new technology even though this thing is 19th century technology. Uh, if you look with a bigger vision, uh, we can use the bus that you're talking about on the concrete to additional to the rail. But right now to, you know, smoke screen the whole situation right now, okay? Uh, we, we have right now, we have right now, the professional people that have made the decision, okay? We went along with this for a while. Now all of these people is popping up here and there uh, for some kind of uh, leverage for whatever technology that they're so called promoting or getting favors. If uh, we run, we do this, we're going to do this for you. Uh, we're going to bring it in front of a beach, right to your doorstep. Hey, sounds all good and dandy. But the thing is, the technology was brought up four, three, four years ago. Nobody brought up this uh, tire on bus thing, and all of a sudden, it's not going to save us money, community. I don't know what anybody's saying. And Reverend Beach was not left out. I don't care what community members say that we're left out. We're not left out. It's just right now, everything, all the legs are not connected. You know, which the wall is going to be short. We're going to find out. We're going to look into that. Chair says we're going to look into that. We're going to try to get um, uh, the department that uh, uh, by uh, the wall with the, with the uh, I guess the professor, whoever is doing this technology that falls short to the West Wall campus. We can get them to come over here and find out. The bottom line is that's a bus. It's another. Transportation. It's a bus. It's a bus. It's a bus. All right. All right. Wait, wait, Thank you. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, all right. Um, I'm gonna let you have your comment. Please keep it short. I got two or three other people standing right behind you. You know, I, I don't care what anybody says, Kurt. You can have your own opinion. But Ever Beach was left out of the whole. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. This is true. From the get go, Ever Beach was left left out of the process, out of the dialogue, out of discussion, out of input. We didn't have anything in there. They bypassed us. Now we get something that we can, and I agree with you, Tom, for the first time. We have something to cling to. I don't care if you say, well, you know, there's, there's uh, technology out there. But what about the community of Ever Beach? What about the community? We, we, we want something too. And, and something was proposed to us, so we jumped on it. You know, we, we as a community jumped on it. And, and, and to say that, uh, Oh, there's, there's something out there. Leave the community out. I think I think we're doing a disservice to ourselves, and you people too are doing a disservice because there's something out there for us, and we cannot let that guys dictate to us. We got to dictate to ourselves and go out there and push what we want. Thank you. You know, I'm not going to appeal on the basis of fairness. I'm just going to be, uh, appeal on the basis of what is the truth. And the truth is that if something acts like light rail, 
performs like light rail, uh, light rail and does everything that light rail can do just because it can do things that buses can also do, which makes it an advantage. Then we're talking about innovation here. We're talking about something that can be innovated in the future. But this thing that the steel wheel on, on steel rail is just, it, it's, it's reached its limit. But bus technology has passed up. It's became light rail and it's gonna go on further. It's, it's really got aircraft technology involved, submarine technology, which I was familiar with, the submarines, the gyroscopes and whatnot. So the thing is that just because something uh, uh, is new, yeah, we, we don't wanna live in the past forever. In other words, this thing is a dinosaur and it's gonna be a relic by the time it's finished. Thank you. Excuse me, ma'am. I have uh, one gentleman that's been patiently waiting on the side, and I'll let you talk to Gilbert. Sure. Thank you. Harry? Just wanted to make this one clarification. Uh, once you leave that fixed guideway and to get on the street, it's no longer considered that you're being on a fixed guideway. It's, uh, that, that does not qualify. Um, so what you're talking about is when you say that this um, vehicle, this rubber tire on concrete, is going to leave the fixed guide to go on the street, to go in, uh, to someone's doorstep, it's no longer a fixed guide system. So you should be, uh, I, I just needed to make that time. Okay. So uh, what the money has been appropriated to be used for is a fixed guide system. And what you're talking about is uh, uh, not necessarily a fixed guide system. Uh, I would encourage all of you to look at the council proceedings uh, that took place um, the past one, uh, the last one that we had. Um, and look at the line of questioning that um, had to do with the previous question. I think you'll be, uh, uh, you'll explain it further, so thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, also clarification, oh. Uh, clarification, number one, proprietary. Actually, these rail tracks and stuff like that that came out in the panel of experts, they are very proprietary. On the other hand, Phileas used off-the-shelf market computers. All components are all off-the-shelf, except for the software and the magnets. Number two, rail. Rail on a dedicated fixed skyway can come every two, three minutes. No bus can do that. It, rail is by um, run by, driven by computers, it does way more than any bus driver does. We're talking about light rail on a dedicated fixed highway. Number three, cost. The fact that the vehicle itself, the contract for the vehicle, according to the paper, I don't know, I hear all kinds. I hear 230 million, I hear 270 million, I hear, but in the vicinity of 200 and something million out of a five, well, say 3.7 billion contract, that means that you have a lot of cost savings because the vehicle is so tiny, but the contract is so huge. So because the construction of that track is no longer in required by the Phileas, that is where you have huge cost savings. There will be cost savings. Uh, as far as dedicated fixed guide goes um, to address this gentleman's um, car <laughs> Uh, you have to have it on a dedicated fixed guideway just because it can go off the guideway if it were to have an emergency situation, an earthquake or whatever it is, right? Does not mean that in the usual daily business it's going to be on the streets. It's, it has to be on a dedicated fixed guideway, otherwise you've got gridlock. And what's the use then? Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, just for clarification, I have uh, Gary over here. Um, Representative Cavanilla and one of my board members, Kurt. Gary? I was over the uh, council meeting and I testified. And right now, it seems like everybody, or like Gary is saying, using the word fixed rail guideway. Don't mix it up. It's fixed guideway, period. How it's going to be used, this is what we're talking about now. Don't use the word fixed or rail fixed or fixed rail guideway. It's going to be elevated, period. How it's going to be used is what the question, how, what we're going to do. And I say to the council, 
that regardless which way you guys vote on, I don't want to be in your guys' shoes because in one way you guys are going to win, one way you're going to lose. I say, I don't want to be in your guys' shoes. Okay, so you. it's a fixed guideway. Elevate it. Don't mix it up. Don't confuse people, mind. I just wanted to weigh in on the initiatives that I have done and the way I have uh, seen the process go. And I agree with everything else that's said in this room, and I, I'm one that favors the inclusion, the inclusion of the fixed guideway in the planning process. As like Anne said, once that, uh, that rubber technology or rail or bus, however you call it, leaves the guideway, then it becomes highway technology. So therefore, the measure that we voted for on the uh, DE tax will no longer apply. But, however, that can be remedied. And uh, all it is is that to amend the law that was passed, that the city and county of Honolulu can then have home rule, which means if the council decides that they can use that money that they collected for Hybrid technology, which is what happens when that transportation means a public transportation, because you know we're having a conflict here on how we want to call it, uh, now becomes highway technology, giving the council the home rule, if that measure can be abetted, we'll just say, if the council decides on rail, I mean steel and steel, or rubber and steel, they could do it. And that's the same measure that the other islands have, that we have done for them. So this is not something that cannot be fixed. Okay, thank you. First. Okay, before, before we keep going on, I guess you guys over here, the beginning part of my ending conversation, I said we need all technology. So we came far, so far, to start off a project. Right now, project's gonna start off, or supposedly start off. Don't confuse everybody by saying now we can start all over. There's a lot of money and time put into this. And you guys talk about money being lost and money being wasted. I'm not saying that the rail is the only way and every beach could be left out. Take any technology is welcome into this community. But what studies? These studies are now just coming up. The other studies that we did for the projects that are coming up now, we did it 20, 30 years. These studies have been in, in place. These studies that you guys are talking about, I'm not saying it cannot be done. But then I'll be close-minded. I'm a visionary. I look to the future on how Elm Beach is going to look. I'm not going to just say one way or this way or no other way. That's ignorant, okay? So this this be pain in mind now. When you guys come up here, when I said I'm for all technology, okay? Don't single me out on, on the board thinking that I'm only for the real. Okay, okay? Right. so just want to clarify that. Thank right. you. Great, thank you. Nobody was trying to single you out, just to let you know. Okay. Right, uh, coach, I'm going to last question with you, Coach, and we got to move on. It is a question. I just want to bring up, you know, um, uh, sir, you got, uh, you got to say, excuse me, my speaker, I'm speaking excuse right me. now. Yeah, you all, you had your say. I appreciate it. But Thank you very much. Understand need, one thing, please. Me. Please understand one thing. Do I need to read the beginning of my Stop. agenda like we talked about? Okay. I'm trying Thank to you. conduct a meeting here. We have a lot on the agenda. I've accommodated everybody about the the bus stop situation, the transportation. I've allowed people to freely come up and talk. Is that correct? Yes. Have I, have I hindered you. anybody? Excuse me. Okay, don't interrupt. Have I hindered anybody? Not so far. Thank you very much. And I don't intend to. I always give people a fair chance to do what they need to do. Okay, and that's why we're here. We're about the business for the community. It's not a one-sided issue. Everybody has a voice. Coach? Thank you, sir. Thank you for running this the way you do. Basically, what Kurt's talking about, he's, everyone's open-minded. That's why we opened it up for this new so-called technology that came in at the last minute. Who knows who's funding it, but we still want to go back to, if you've ever been to Japan, Germany, France, let's just stick with the basics. We've got a plan. The mayor has been working his tail end off to try and get this going. We lost it 15 years ago. Let's not lose it again. After some little few amount of people that want to come up and change it, let's just stick with one one main plan and we can go off from there. It's just one straight, you got, you got to build one leg first and then branch off. You know, you're not going to get doorstep service anywhere. Let the kids walk a quarter mile, but thank you so much. Let's okay. just stick with the plan and go with it and not lose the money like we did 
that with, with Kai and Han. Okay, we're moving forward, and that's a key point. All right, thank you very much. Sorry, I already mentioned uh, that was the last question. We're going to move on. Uh, we only got about 20 minutes left on this uh, meeting, and we got to close out. Otherwise, I lose the secretary from the neighborhood commission. Does everybody understand that? Three sentences. Three sentences, sir. All right, wait, wait, wait. All right, we have we have a motion on the floor. We had a lot of discussion. In fact, about 20 minutes of discussion. And we'd like and to call for, for us, and, we, and he can speak for us. Uh, nobody's speaking chair. for anybody. You all speak for yourself. Order order. I'm ready to repeat the motion. Oh, yeah. Yes. Chair. No. Let's Wait, let's let's I think it was unfair of you to let the gentleman speak. Chair, would you recognize the speaker? And, and turn everybody else off. Uh, you talk three times yourself. Okay. Yeah, I just want to make it a point that he okay. talked twice, Same. and you let everybody else talk once. The motion would be to convey to the City Council, Chair Marshall, on behalf of the full Council on April 16th, that the Board favor in the EIS, Environmental Impact Statement, that the Board favor, favor the inclusion of rubber tire technology. Tom, clarify from this Yeah, the board took a position for March 19th for rubber tire and concrete, and March 19th is over with. Now on April 16th, that was the second reading of Bill 80. Third reading of Bill 80 will be on April 16th. If the board wants to continue and provide comment, the motion would be to facilitate that advancement that was positioned for March 19th to April 16th to say the board favors for the environmental impact statement to be inclusive of rubber tire and concrete technology. Uh, Could I just propose that we not limit it to rubber tire technology? It will we open it up that we ask the EIS to uh, to consider all relevant technologies? Would you go with that? With a specific to have a beach. What do you mean? I'll second it. So we can discuss. Yeah. No. All right. My my discussion on that, Chair, if you'd recognize me, is that uh, is that is why the third reading is transpiring. Is that to progress? In other words, we taxpayer. I think I think it's eighty nine million dollars for the EIS. Right. If if it's going to be more money to be of multiplicity in an EIS a draft EIS, if there's going to be multiplicity of technologies, we the taxpayer wind up paying excess amounts over that $89 million sum. If it's the council's determination that they want maglev still in there, and if they want all of the choices in there, then the EIS will reflect that in a cost analysis, right? There will be some kind of a, a, a expenditure to do that. The council on, on, on a final draft three on April 16th is to process it and narrow the scope, not expand the scope. So, in other words, if we're going to expand the scope according to your friendly amendment, right. the EIS would have to be manipulated with that cost factor. What part of that uh, discussion is your acceptance of the amendment? If the, the, I believe the friendly amendment was that it not be limited to rubber tire, but rather state then that the EIS be inclusive of rubber tire and other technologies. All. All relevant technologies. All. I think that as a community, we are not learning where the process is with the city council. I have watched them deliberate all technologies. I have watched everything that we've asked to be done to be done. I would suggest the following amendment to demonstrate that we as a community have learned what the obstacles are and we offer this and either it moves forward or it doesn't. I would say that the Evan Beach Neighborhood Board encourages the City Council to recognize that the limited number of suppliers for Phileas is an opportunity for economic development for island-based suppliers. The Evan Beach Neighborhood Board encourages the City Council to leverage the capital base of the Hawaii Employee Retirement System to purchase patents and copyrights relevant to the perpetuation of the Phileas system should its parent company go out of business. 
If these two concerns are not addressed, I think there's no reason why the council member is going to reverse their decision. We have to help them to overcome the objections that they have when we want to close this deal, or else we're just spitting the same sales pitch. It's a waste of everybody's time. So that's, I, I'm not in support of the first two amendments. I'm in support of the third, and I'd like to move forward. If I can then comment on, on his statement, Chair, that would be that the board wants to stay as far away as possible of naming a vendor. To name Phileas is is uh, is not, in my opinion, the by calling it rubber tire and concrete allows all vendors to be applicable. When you say Phileas or you narrow it and you specify a name, you, you get locked in. And that can easily be refuted and shot down by saying rubber tire and concrete, it's inclusive of, if it's Phileas or other, other vendors. Okay, the uh, statements from the other board members of all. Uh, call for the question. Yes. Well, no, no. no. He, he didn't. There was no yeah. motion. He was commenting. Oh, I was offering my own amendment. Okay. I don't support her. Do I want to say that? Yeah, he did say that. Any second on uh, Scott's? Good one, Mitch. I right, so Gary seconded it, and then we changed Phileas to. Don't uh, lose the liars for any technology. And then we say everything everybody wants to hear, so then it would be. Uh, either blah, 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 uh, limit the number of suppliers for any technology as an opportunity for economic development, blah, blah, blah. Purpose of patents and copyrights relevant to the actuation of any technology. So if we change that, then, then everybody's got everything they want, and the city council can say, gee, we haven't thought of that. Thanks for making this look good. <laughs> All right, and we have a motion on the floor has been amended twice. And second. So how does it read now? All? Exactly. So, so Gary, Gary seconded it? Yes. All. Okay. Yeah. Call for the question. Call for the question. All right. All in favor? Aye. We need clarification again. <laughs> You're going to call it. Oh, we're going to call it. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 It was suggested this board take a position to send a letter to UH West of Wahoo uh, and also the city council and the mayor uh, that, here's the motion, that this board favor that the fixed guideway service UH West of Wahoo directly. I second that. All right, motion on the floor, second it. Any discussion? And all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so move. Good. Okay, thanks. Item number four, open seat. Um, at large, <coughs> we have one position on the board. Um, and we have uh, two nominations. Can I nominate myself? Yeah, I can. Can? Yeah. Uh, okay. Now we have three nominations. Okay, which, uh, I'm sorry, who's your first name again? I introduce myself, Chris Burke. I lived here at Yellow Beach for five years. Three, three, four, no. No, no. I'm, not, I'm not sure if you can. Sorry, I'm not going to play against you, but. Um, they already had closed the elections, and Celeste was the one that nominated herself back. So we already okay. voted, we already made a tally, and uh, the elections is already closed, so, I mean, 
I mean, I'll be, I'll be corrected. I mean, I'm just bringing that out there to see if that's the procedure. Okay, that's so, really I'm, not really I'm pretty sure that's right. what well, I have. Yeah, really yeah. 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 Correct. Yeah. Close. Correct. Okay. Close. Okay. Close. All right. Uh, counsel from my uh, uh, past uh, chairs, which also gives me counsel, uh, indicated that we are, uh, are in fact, have closed the uh, nominations. Uh, there are two people that have been nominated. It's up to the board to uh, make a selection. Okay, okay, I'm sorry, I never really worked for all the three, so that's why I mentioned it. Yeah, you, I think you came in late. No, I was here when they were not oh, okay. 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 I didn't hear the word closed. Okay. I'm sorry, Rich. Um, is it too late for me to be kind? Why? Because okay. I, I have too many things with my union that I am too obligated. I'm sorry, but I will still be here every month. Okay, well, uh, by default, Clint, uh, you are now a uh, new board member, and I think Nola has yeah. given an opportunity for you. Come on, come on, come on down. Okay, you guys were. Um, yeah. All right, we can continue on. Stay seated. All right, we're going to continue on, and um, uh, the neighborhood commission assistant will swear in the new member for the board, and uh, we'll welcome him. And then, of course, he'll be very active uh, in the next months to come. Um, reports from elected officials. Um, Mayor's rep, Joyce, are you still here? Okay, thank you. Structure and roads are helping them pave part of that, um, I guess, the road area over there. I had a chance to talk to Debbie who was here earlier. Because, you know, 2010 is kind of far away. I mean, you know, Ever Beach people, we get bust up tires already. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's being a problem, especially in that area. I mean, even when you ride your motorcycle, not a lot of people have motorcycles, but it's very dangerous riding a motorcycle, you know, to there. Even, just going slow, there's a lot of holes and you know, to wait that long from the time frame of when they had finished the construction to now, um, I don't think that's good enough for the community. Unless they go back in there and rip out all the, you know, the area that they had patched Kapulu and go back and patch a place. That's the only other alternative I think Gentry have. Going there, all the patchwork that they did ugly, come maybe, back and uh, redo it. Okay. Since we're talking about roads, Fort Capona was brought up to my attention. Um, I got your message. Uh, okay. The response I got from the department is that it's the contractor on that project is Colucci, from Colucci Company. And um, the timeline was the second part of your question, and I don't have that information. 
can you, can you give it to us next month? Um, yeah, we put something in writing for it. Yeah. Uh, those have been working, correct? Right? Those have been writing for you? Yes, okay. Uh, Mitchell? On the little beach park, you know, the needles. Mm -hmm. You said at the bash there were no needles found. Yeah, they go to sleep on Saturday morning. Yeah, but that afternoon my children were playing on the sand. They found two and gave it, gave them to the, I guess the city workers, on that day. Okay. And they were right next to the sign, right below the sign that they put into the ground, saying danger for the needles. And they thought it was a sample. Say, oh, this is the sample needle. I'm gonna show everybody. This one look like. They go, you from? They, they asked, where did you find it? They said, over oh, here. Okay. Right by the sign. It's good that they gave it to the park workers. Yeah. But in the morning, they did go out with the sweepers. They brought it in from um, town. And they did the sweep. So I'm surprised to hear that. Okay. So thank you. Okay, any other board members? No. no. The new International Little Beach, the, the golf course there on North Road, uh, that uh, portion of roadway, the uh, golf course owner is responsible for maintaining uh, the easement, shoulder, setback, right of way. Okay, they have foliage encroachment uh, that's impeding upon the thoroughfare of North Road. And uh, the request is to have Department of Planning and Permitting, Director Ames, send out those to cite the owner of the golf course to remedy the situation. The same was done to Coral Creek Golf Course uh, when their debris was scattered along Geiger Road. And the citation process was initiated and Coral Creek Golf Course cleaned up. So what we have here is the golf course. The question is, could you check and see if this golf course has indeed been cited by planning and permitting to comply and, and be in compliance. Okay, I'll be happy to submit that to the Department of Planning and Permitting. Usually it's the um, site as a result of a complaint being filed, so I'll take that as a complaint and submit it. Okay, any other board members? <coughs> Hi, Joyce. Um, can you just bring it up to the DTS regards about repaving the whole stretch of Renton Road? Because it's going to be look like a, you know, part of Philippines in there. And also, I brought it up this back in December about the crosswalk along on the Kahi, Kahi Uka Street and Kapolei Parkway. This is right in front of the Geiger Park. There's a green neon sign pedestrian right there, but there's no crosswalk plane. And you guys building the Geiger Park in there, and sooner or later the park will be busy and there's no pedestrian lane at all. Okay, the first item that we gave me, I'm gonna have to record that too. I guess that was in more than um, maybe I'll correct that I can get the street lane from there. Okay. Hi Grace. Uh, did you do any follow-ups on the crosswalks? Because I have noticed that in town they also have that same crosswalk and I noticed in the paint yeah, you could see those little um, sand but it's still slippery when you walk on it when it's raining. Okay. So, um, you know, that is, that is very dangerous. So can you follow, did you follow up on that? Yeah. The response I got from the department was that based on uh, the, the traffic code, I believe, or the federal regulations that we are not allowed to put sand in our paint. It was a, the, um, it's not regulation. And um, if that is, I mean, that's the report I got. So if you want me to, this inquires to where, maybe you can tell me where you saw Okay, let's uh, uh, utilize. Let's uh, uh, okay. 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 Okay.
this has been an ongoing year, uh, probably on two years now. Crosswalk, Copley Library, Copley Park, no crosswalk, soccer pick games, all kinds of things going on. I, I know that the department may I know there's a, a nice uh, mm -hmm. signal down at the end of the road, mm -hmm. but we got a no brainer. A library and a park, kids going across the street. The it's determination was made by the Department of Transportation that that area is in order for a crosswalk. I know it was submitted for ins uh, installation, so I'll check with you. Could you give me a number, a uh, job order number, or something that can follow up on this? Because my daughter's doing this as a, a Girl Scout. Well, she was doing it as Brownie. Now she's a junior scout, and she's going on to be a, another scout. Uh, she graduated, so it's like her third year. Uh, uh, do the, uh, sure, I'll, right I'll do it. Uh, yeah. She'll be able to follow that. Why don't the neighborhood? Uh, Councilman Lowe. Can I ask for about 10 seconds of your time? Sure. Okay. Uh, I skipped over one piece in the agenda. Yeah, and so I asked a very quick one. A couple 10 seconds, and then you're on. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We um, had some new business um, bringing up the overall work program for the Oahu Metropolitan Planning Organization. And it's relevant just more so for some of you in the, in the TV audience because you have until April 28th to submit some public testimony. And we're always reacting to development and situations in our community. And so for those of us who find energy to react, this is your chance to act. So plans are on the table. You can go to www.oahumpo.org and download the report, a summary, or a really easy to use form for testimony. There's copies here in the office in, uh, in tonight's meeting. So just, just please be aware there's a lot affecting our community. We run out of time tonight, but what you can't overlook is that uh, you have until 28 to, to provide comment. Otherwise, you'll be at this board meeting two years from now reacting to what we needed you to act on. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thanks, Scott. Compliment. Quick comment on Scott's uh, presentation. No. Okay. Uh, good evening. I'll try to make this brief. Just follow up the last meeting. Question came up from Ms. Bautista about the Rowan Village and where that is. The resolution is still uh, with the committee. I've met with various departments to try to come up with a plan so that the city can get that area developed, redeveloped, and get units specifically for those. I think there's about 21 and 22 people still in the district in housing there and try to get them the housing locations within the Rowan Village. So that's an ongoing process until the department gets some information together. We're going to hold off on moving that resolution, but the effort is continuing. Um, on the resolution regarding the neighborhood board term limits um, that were coming up on second reading, we'll, we'll be back in executive matters. I've heard from all three and now I've got four neighborhood boards that all have a third <coughs> resolution and that's for a charter amendment provided for the limits. So I will take that and oppose that resolution. Uh, a lot going on on PBUs and bed breakfasts. Just so everyone knows, the bills that we have before us are strictly for bed and breakfasts. They do not affect TBUs. TBUs is something we're going to have to deal with after we get the bed and breakfast issues settled. Committee deferred it. We will have another committee meeting before it goes to second meeting of council. Um, just last note, I don't know if you guys want to be addressed. I'm, I'm ready to jump up on your second um, issue, which is in regards to which West Wahoo campus and the transit line. Uh, I, am, I, I think the proposed route is as much of a mistake as not going to the airport in Pearl Harbor right now. And I'm going to be working to get that corrected. That said, I appreciate the support, but what I want you guys to know is my concern is that with the motion you passed, it, it may not be as effective because the position of, I've heard it from the administration, DTS right now, is that the stop they have, which is in Holopelia, on the other side of the North South Road, services UH West along the campus. And I don't think that's the intent of any of us. I think all of us agree that it needs to be a lot more south road for services. The other position that has been talked about, apparently a proposal before from DTS, was to take the line into the West Oahu campus. And that's something that Chancellor Abakuni has been against. But I don't want the motion that says we want direct service to West Oahu campus to be taken as we want it going into the campus. I think the best way to serve it is a lot more south road or just um, on the campus side of it, so that, again, it's within that quarter mile walking distance. So if you guys want to readdress that, or somehow just so I can take that message back. And obviously, 
the technology is coming up on the 16th. I don't want to take up the time, but I'll offer again as I did a couple months ago. If you guys would like me to come in and explain what, what my thinking is on everything from why steel on steel, why we're trying to close the cons of all that, the building system, we'd like to do it. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Tom Very quickly, Farrington Highway flyover, the north south road in your jurisdiction. You're also on the Humble Policy Committee. Could you please initiate that? Uh, Representative Cabanilla put in the overall work program that Scott had alluded to for the draft 2009. Uh, this is to provide for the impact fees to make it included. Farrington Highway flyover. UH is thinking two decades from now doing that flyover. We're getting a traffic signal at that intersection. If you could please consider instigating at the upper level and with the city county's budget to process this flyover now, not two decades from now. Okay, the other place that will come up is in the rezoning of the Jewish West Wahoo lands, as well as the rezoning of the Jewish and the traffic impacts. So, yes, I have it on the list. Okay, thank you. Any other board, Gary? Sir, good morning. Uh, good evening. Um, I brought last time, and, 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 and I, I mentioned that uh, uh, we on the Leeward Coast are getting hell because we water our grass, we're supposed to water our grass, but we don't get no relief uh, because it's being soaked down. Uh, we don't get relief from the sewage people. They charge us two or three times the amount of water that we use. Um, it was suggested by the Nanakuli board, and I think I tried to suggest it to you also. That maybe, I know this, is there a way you can make a, re a submit a resolution or an idea that uh, a meter be installed at the houses to see how much water that they use goes into the sewage system. I know this is going to take 10 years or 20 years, but uh, this is something that we should look into because we on the Leeward Coast getting, you know, screwed. And DeSoto had tried to put something in oh, when, when, when he was in a council, but it fell through the crack. And, and like I said, John DeSoto, uh, Started something I did as well in 2005. Um, the response you get is just someone knows anyone that wants to, you can install your own separate meter for the water that does not go into your residence, and that will not be charged sewer fees. But it's not something, yes, so, but it needs to be installed by the individual. But if you do that, you will not be charged for the water that runs through that meter that stays outside. So it is possible to do more, the water supply will work with you on taking care of that. Well, how are we doing that? Well, who do we contact? Uh, just contact for the water supply. Okay, thank you. Okay, Ariel. I don't know if any, I, I don't know the details of how long program works, but I'll try to get that information out of this. Hi, good evening, Mr. Councilman. I was just informed by the residents of Westlock Elderly Housing or Westlock Elderly Village. Okay, to be excited that you guys are in the process of selling that location to a private. And that's been around to all the Westlock, you know, the Westlock residents. And they, they are worried about converting that to a private, you know, entity because of the affordable housing, you know, and they go raise up the, the rent. Are you guys planning to because the, the, the news right now is all over. Okay. And just so I understand, the city is looking at either selling but more likely leasing all of their affordable housing projects. Um, it's still very early stages. We're still waiting from the council side, waiting for the department to come with us with a program recommendation. To the extent any city affordable housing facilities are sold or leased, Again, council has committed, and we've all said this very strongly, we will not do it unless it is guaranteed that the affordable rates remain. Okay. Go ahead, Thank you. Um, secondary treatment. We're getting overpopulated, and we still got the same thing that we have out there. Are we going to ever get secondary treatment, or are we waiting for the federal to sue the city? Um, do you know anything about that? The, the city is going to continue to oppose secondary treatment. 
again, and I know I've had this discussion here before, looking at the science of it, uh, the deep ocean where that outfall is is a better way to treat into secondary treatment than it is to try to do it on land. Uh, not just from a cost standpoint, but just from a bio biological mechanism standpoint. Um, the Clean Water Act was put in there to deal with um, wastewater treatment systems that dumped into streams, rivers, lakes that weren't as large as the ocean, did not have the biology mechanisms that we have in our ocean. So the city is going to continue to fight that. All right, thank you very much. Governor's rep. Uh, Tom. Hello. Okay. I'm going to say you look a little bit different. My name is Tom Reed. I'm going to thank you for Tommy. Okay. That would be good. Uh, distributed the Governor's Board update. Uh, so I'll just briefly go over the um, DLIR has held briefings for all the folks that work for Aloha and ATA, and they'll continue to have for the next several weeks job fairs uh, to try to help them with that. The governor's Turtle Bay Advisory Working uh, Group is progressing along, so we're trying to look forward and uh, move on that. There has uh, been a wind energy technology partnership that has been established, and very briefly, last, the funding for Worship of Place, that uh, needs uh, some refurbishing, uh, significant refurbishing, and that has stalled in the legislature. And the governor wanted everyone to be aware of that. And uh, it's because Worship of Place is so important to uh, the people of Hawaii. And if they can be aware, if they need to uh, contact the legislature, please do so. Okay, board members, any questions? Uh, there is in Rep. Cavanilla's report on the front page communication um, in exchange back and forth from the governor that we can fit three lanes over the Farrington Highway overpass that goes over Farrington Highway, the Cunilla Road. That bridge can fit three lanes. Could you come back or apprise this community next month, whoever the representative is, what the cost estimate is to reconfigure to provide for those three lanes and optimally, optimally uh, to provide two lanes to go each, each one eastbound? And that's in the uh, packet from Rep. Cavanilla that uh, brings that to our attention. Thank you. So you brought up the Aloha Airlines situation and them closing on that. Uh, why, why did we have to wait to uh, all of these airlines close to that drastic measure to now go into, I guess, legislation to make a law bill to uh, prevent any other uh, airlines from going other, under? But right now, uh, right now it's Hawaii. Hawaii is taking all the uh, so-called being the hero in this picture. But, uh, you know, the reason for that is because we did a lot of stuff with Aloha Airline in the past, and it's, it was sad to see that we stepped up a little too late to the, to the plate, I guess, what you're saying. So if there's, there's anything, I mean, there's nothing to get to already. I know it's done. But then now if you look into, like, the Molokai ranks, is it uh, our governor from Molokai? Where was she, where she was brought up? Uh, from Maui. Maui. Okay, I thought it was Molokai. Okay, well, my, 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 my uh, correction. Anyway, I think she should look just as hard at the Molokai Ranch and preserving that as she is at Turtle Bay. Uh, you know, that's that's a good idea, Turtle Bay and all that. It's all G. But uh, Molokai ain't got no jobs. And I think those people right now is in more jeopardy in a financial situation than the people on Turtle Bay. And I think those guys have jobs right now. You know, I know a little bit about the development and all there, but what I'm saying is that by not doing anything right now, it's not going to cost anybody for losing anything right now. By staying and holding up on Molokai Ranch and like dropping, you know, waiting late for the low airline situation, we cost people jobs. And right now, they're, they got to feed their families. So, uh, so that's what I'm asking if you can just look into that. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Gary? Thank you. Gary, I have a question. Thank you. Oh, wait. Thank you. Uh, Gary, sorry. I'm out. We're going to freeze frame and in fact, the TV crew got to close out here shortly.
kind of stay just in case we do have to document something or provide documentation. But this is our, this is our. We can only show two hours, 15 minutes, 30 seconds. As I currently say, we stay as much as possible. And, and they do have curfew. They have school tomorrow and not much time. Right, you guys will be a... Right, no more grants. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the uh, community hears that. Uh, uh, we'll go right through the rest of this agenda. So the kids can go home and do their homework. What do you mean? One quick, one, a quick point that I, mean, I would like to ask him about is um, since we're talking about triple B, We've been talking about the stairway to heaven <coughs> where the old, old Omega station was. Um, you know, it's been going back and forth. The state don't want it. The state, you, know, you know, the city don't want it. And, and yet, we're trying to preserve it. And we're trying to get it to the history, you know, the, as a historical place. Um, will the state buy, consider buying that? I know they said no because it's all a liability and all that stuff, but I, I just want to bring this up again so everybody knows that I am climbing that. Well, I do climb that. Uh, I'll just definitely bring it up at the moment. I'm not speaking on behalf of the state, but as a private citizen and an attorney, I would question the probability of buying something that, that has some kind of, that kind of liability in danger. But um, I'll be able to see what. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, one more thing. Um, thank you for being here. You know, we love our governor and all that. And Turtle Bay comes into mind again. As in Molokai, we've got a lot of people out of work over there. We also have a lot of taxpayers over on this side. We've got a lot of infrastructure. If we can maybe not think about spending $350 million over there and maybe fixing, finishing our infrastructure here in Kapolei on this side. There's a lot more taxpayers over here. And uh, we need to get things done over here before we can buy something else. Thank you. DLRI actually did uh, go over it and try to help the folks at um, Molokai uh, Ranch as well. So it's not as good as that was announced that they can go over as well. Okay, so these things are in, in motion? At least for the employees and, and the residents, yes. Okay. In, in terms of what you talk about, maybe, you know, what happened to the and uh, talk about it next month. So. Okay, sounds good. If you could bring that back to us, I think that would be good. We'll service the community as well. Okay, uh, lost my paper again. Uh, Senator Spurl's office? Not here. And Representative Kevin how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, good night to all of you. Well, I came personally tonight, mainly because I, I want some board actions and I also want to ask the community and a couple of mentions that I'm working on right now. And uh, some of you have heard tonight, and that is to, uh, I'm working with DOT uh, to get three lanes off the bridge over Farrington, as you see, and, uh, and that would dress up and augment the efforts of widening Fort Weaver Road right now. Because as you know, we can widen it, we're widening it to three lanes, but once it gets to the bridge, it's down to two lanes. So it just stands the reason that uh, we need to make the bridge a three lane as well. Uh, there are some issues that are brought up with widening it, and I can answer that when the appropriate time comes. And also um, working on, with also with the DOT, on getting two full access lanes to the H1. And uh, also I'm communicating with the, uh, um, the city and county as far as getting a flight over rather than a traffic signal on North South Road and uh, Franklin Highway. And also going back on Renton Road, um, they get, you know, in my report, the way to go to it, uh, is the, they're ready, the, the uh, DOT gave me an estimate on how much that would cost. Because what I really want was, is to have to elongate the first left turn lane out of Brenton to the first coconut tree or pine tree that is. And it's only a few feet, in, in my opinion, maybe uh, five yards or so, so that we can get more cars to turn left rather than just having a small uh, place there. But uh, according to the estimated DOT, it's over half a million dollars to do that. Um, 
So they said, well, we cannot entertain it right now, but we'll definitely get back with you. So I was waiting on, so that's the end of that for now. Um, and uh, uh, speaking of bus stops, I think that we also need to relocate that bus stop. So the, the bus stop that we'll have to turn lane, we will have to cut into the second left turn lane out of Brentford. The, the, the reason the DOT, what the DOT was trying to tell me is that when uh, the north-south road is connected in Renton, uh, it will ease up the congestion in Renton Road, which I disagree, because not to bring up the bad news, there's uh, affordable housing coming out of Renton Road, there's also senior housing coming out, and there's two more developments down the road. So um, I think that we as a community need to push uh, the city and county and the DOT to uh, look at that rather than us and them putting us in the back burner because of half a million dollar cost to it. The longer we wait, the longer, the more the cost will be. So I leave you, I know my um, my report is quite extensive, but we all want to go to sleep, so I now open the question. If there's anything you want to ask, it's it's good good. Any questions, board members? Thank you. Uh, any questions, comments? Okay, nice. Thank you very much. Okay, wrap up. I wanted to know if, uh, but uh, wrap up, sorry. Um, you know, for you said you wanted the board to take action. Right, right yes. For the, um, uh, making the bridge into three lanes. Yes. So I want to make a motion that we Thank you very do, do much. such a thing yeah. because yeah. there's no sense of we having all of this development if we're going to fall short and try to get something done with the bridge. So if they're going to do that bridge widening down below, I mean, I don't see why they cannot work on widening the bridge at the area. So I make a motion to... Okay, I, I guess I have a question in reference to the uh, make motion if it wasn't placed on the agenda. Yeah. First put it on the agenda. And then we can take action. Yeah. And it's uh, kind of a late hour, and of course we're already off the... Uh, oh, okay, I'm sorry. So what I'm saying is uh, maybe you just entertain it for next month. Okay, can you put that on the agenda? That may be appropriate. Let me just one quick, uh, one quick comment on that writing the making the bridge three lanes. They don't have to extend the bridge. All it is is we that they have to restrive it. So we we'll lose the shoulder, but we have three lanes. Yeah. And, and I understand that it was actually addressed earlier, uh, that same situation with the uh, widening of the, increasing the lanes on the bridge, right. not particularly widening, <coughs> increasing the lanes. Mm -hmm. and that was already addressed. And then if uh, you want to action on it, I think this is something we need to look at before our next meeting. Okay. And we'll Great. place it on the agenda to do so. Okay. Good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How are you doing today? Good. Good to see you. Thank you for being here for my, my report. Uh, as you uh, was reported to you <laughs> earlier, uh, Europa Point is going to be open to all of us now, April 15th. I'm really looking forward to getting all of your feedback and how that works for you and your constituents. Um, uh, as you know, and Rich knows, we definitely wanted more, but uh, we didn't want to stop the negotiations just so we can get any of everything that we want. So we're really happy that this is a good start, that 20% of the parking spaces was uh, uh, given to all of us. So definitely let me know how that goes for you and your access there. Um, for all the women, and any of you know that uh, any women that are in trouble and are in situations, we now have uh, very soon um, a shelter for women who are abused, for them and their children, where they can live and be in a safe environment. And it's going to be at the Child and Family Services. Um, we just broke ground um, just the other week. Um, Ella at Beach Elementary is going to be one of the schools lucky enough to get a new playground. And the donor will be plans for that. Um, and there's many more things in my report that talks about how great our schools are doing. Uh, I don't know if you folks know, but almost all of our schools, uh, their testings have been increasing dramatically in, in every school in our, our district. And so I'm really proud to share that with all of you. Um, on the legislative side, uh, Aloha Airlines closing and Molokai Ranch closing was a, a, a big topic of discussion at the Capitol. And just to let all of you folks know, just not long ago,